in the next step, we will go through the construction of the connecting bush between the circular and rectangular bosses as shown in this picture. I will use Sketcher, Surfaces and Path Design commands to complete this step. So, back in the CATIA window, let's insert another geometrical set and rename it as Connecting Bush. I will hide the 3D profiles and the bush surfaces. I will create a plane at 78mm from the ZX plane. I will start a position sketch on this new plane while aligning the orientation of the V and H directions as shown. Next, I will draw a rectangle and constrain it as seen in the picture below. Let me make the Generative Shape Design Workbench active. And select the Extrude command from the Surfaces toolbar in the Extrude command definition window. Let's extend the surface of this profile normal to XZ plane. I will update the limit 1 type to up to element and then for the up to element value I will select the inside face of the circular boss like so. I will update the limit 2 dimension value to 0 and click on OK to complete this command. Now to proceed further let's perform split operation while defining the base part body as the work object and the connecting bush surface extrude as the splitting element. Next, I will define circular boss as the work object and repeat the split operation with the same surface extrude as the splitting element. Let me repeat the split operation with rectangular boss as the work object. If I rotate the model, you can see the result of all these split operations. I will insert a new body under the path body and rename it as connecting bush.
let's select the thick surface command from the surface based features toolbar with the connecting bush as the work object. I will apply a 6mm offset to the connecting bush surface extrude. I will click on the reverse direction button and then click on OK to complete this feature. If I rotate the solid model, you can see that the connecting bush appears like a separate body from the main model. So, I will perform an add boolean operation on connecting bush, circular boss and rectangular boss as shown. Now you can see that all the subpart bodies are combined as one body. Moving on to the next step, I will walk you through the steps required to make holes on the base frame and apply fillets as seen in this picture. So making sure we have the part design workbench active, I will unhide the sketch containing the holes. Let's define the base part body as the work object and then click on the pocket command from the sketch based features toolbar. In the pocket definition window, I will select the sketch for the holes for the profile selection and click on the reverse direction button and click on OK. The pocket feature is now completed. Next, I will make the part body as the work object and select the edge fillet command from the dress up features toolbar, for the objects to fillet field, I will select the edges as shown and update the radius value to 3mm. Let's click on the preview button to see if the fillet is happening correctly. and then click on OK. The holes and the fillet features are now completed. Moving on to the next step, we shall create a drawing of this model as shown in this picture. This drafting exercise will help us verify that all the dimensions in the model are correct. So from the start menu, I will click on mechanical design and then click on the drafting workbench. I will select empty sheet and then click on OK. A new empty drawing sheet opens up. Now I will click on the front view command in the views toolbar and switch the window to the solid model of this exercise. I will place the front view as shown using the views option and then click on the base. Next I will add a projected view as shown. Now let's add a section view. I will draw the section line as shown and place the section view above the front view. Now I will move the section view below the front view by holding the display view frame as shown. I will edit the properties of this view 
to view the center line. Next, I will select the dimensions command from the dimensioning toolbar and add all the linear dimensions in this view. Next up, I will select the radius dimensions command and add them like so. Finally, in this view, I will also add the diameter dimensions. Let's update the name of this view to top view. Let's move on to adding dimensions on the bottom view. First, I will add the linear dimensions as shown. and then the radius dimension. I will update the view name to front view. For the section view, I will add the linear dimensions first and then the diameter and radius dimensions as shown.
Now, I will click on the isometric view on the Views toolbar. Then switch to the Model window. I will place the isometric view in the Graphics area using the Views feature. And click on the flat surface as shown. The isometric view appears in the drawing as seen. Once I click on the outside of the view, the view is confirmed. Similarly, I will bring in the other side of the isometric view like so. The drawing is now complete.